you have learned about rigid bodies. You have learned how they move. You have learned ways to describe the moving system in terms of initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, the time taken to change this acceleration or time taken to change the initial velocity to final velocity and the distance that is traveled by the body. You have also learned in laws of motion what is the reason that uh, an object moves or you have described forces. You found a link between force and the acceleration and therefore you had a list of formulae and rules. We are going to utilize all this knowledge for doing some simple problems. The forces that we have considered so far have been push, pull, weight, tension, normal force and of course a force of friction. So we are going to make use of all these and some formulae which we have arrived at and some equations that we have been using. Let us see our list of equations and expressions that we will use for our work. One more thing you have learned and that is a free body diagram. We are going to make use of that. Now what is a free body diagram? It is a point in space where you imagine all the forces which are actually acting on the body. So you can show by arrows and mark the values of the forces on a body. You also know about concurrent forces. What are concurrent forces? These are forces which act simultaneously at a point on a body. And there are rules for equilibrium. What can forces do? They can change the position of the body. They can make the body rotate about something. So the rules are that all the forces, if they make up a resultant or net force equal to zero, then the body is in equilibrium. It does not move at all. Also, if the force is likely to cause a rotation in the body about some pivot, then the forces that are causing a clockwise motion are going to be exactly equal to the effect of forces that are causing an anti-clockwise motion. So clockwise turning is equated to anti-clockwise turning. So therefore, we can start doing some simple problems using these. Equations and formula used. Let us collect our equations. V is equal to u plus 80. V square is equal to u square plus 2 a s. S is equal to u t plus half a t square. F is equal to m a. F t is equal to m v minus m u. F is equal to mu r or mu n. Here u is the initial velocity, v is the final velocity, a is the acceleration, s is the distance travelled by the object from moving from velocity of u to v and t is the time elapsed, f is the force that is acting, m is the mass of the body and mu is the coefficient of friction and we also have n or r as we said as the normal force. Problem number one, a car of mass 1500 kg and a truck of mass 3000 kg are moving on a straight road. Let us say their speeds are 10 meters per second, which you know is equivalent to 54 kilometers per hour. So that is well within the limit of speed limit. The driver suddenly spot a herd of cow on the road. Now they need to stop this vehicle in which they are. So they have to decide to say stop the vehicle 50 meters away from where they are. How much force should the brakes apply in order to avoid any accident? Accident here with the car or the truck with the cows in the herd. What are the steps we need to take for this? We know that the force would be given by mass into acceleration, but we don't know the acceleration. How are we going to find the acceleration? We know that the car needs to stop, so consider it moving with the speed of u, then the v value, the final velocity, must become zero. 
you know the distance it has to travel before it needs to stop. So, you can use and apply the expression v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s. Using this one and plugging our values, we can find the value for acceleration. So, we have u is equal to 10 meters per second, v is equal to 0, s is equal to 50 meters and then we are using our equation v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s and therefore, we can write it as 0 is equal to 10 into 10 which is equal to 100 plus 2 into 50 that is the 50 meters it needs to travel as s and a we do not know. So, from this equation we find that the value of a is equal to minus 1 m s raised to minus 2 or meters per second square. This is now easy for us because we get the braking force for the two vehicles. One vehicle is of a lesser mass and the other of a higher. So, the braking force for the two would be different though they were traveling with the same speed. Here you must make note of this fact because mass becomes very very important and relevant. So, the braking force for the car is only going to be 1500 Newton while that for the truck is going to be 3000 Newton. So, the truck driver better be very very alert. Let us look at problem number 2. A bag of potatoes of mass 6 kg is suspended by a rope from the ceiling. A force of 50 newtons in the horizontal direction is applied at the midpoint of the rope. Find the angle that the rope must make with the vertical to keep the potatoes in equilibrium. Notice in the question you are saying that there are several forces acting and that the bag of potatoes is in equilibrium. For us to imagine a little better, I have a bag of potatoes which is hanging from this stand. We are going to use this in order to make a free body diagram. This is the rope and we are saying that a force of 15 Newtons is keeping it to the side. Supposing I take it on this side for convenience, the force that I am applying here in this direction is going to be my 50 Newton as given in the picture. And here the force would be 6 kg multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. So, if we take that as 10, then 6 kg would mean a 60 Newton force acting downwards. The tension in this particular string would be along the string itself. So, you can create a free body diagram which will look something like this. Notice over here if I represent the bag of potatoes to have the weight shown by this red arrow, then 50 Newton would be my force given by the yellow one and this would be the direction of the force of tension like this. Now, how to solve this problem? Take a look at the diagram. We have learnt in the unit of vectors how to find components. If you remember that you have to imagine a right angle triangle, consider the angle there and find the value for component judiciously. Why I use the word judicious here is that you will have to see which direction are you looking at for the component. So, in this particular case like when you take it like this, then with the vertical you have a certain angle here, this one. And if I want a component in this direction like this, it would work out in terms of this angle as tension T sine of this angle over here. So, this angle here is theta and this is the vertical. So, this is the angle that I am looking for. The same angle is here and I can talk about the component in the horizontal direction as given by T sin theta. The component in the vertical direction for the same one would be T cos theta here. So, this is T sin theta and in the vertical direction would be T cos theta. Then what you need to do is since this particular bag of potatoes is in equilibrium, all the forces that are 
acting on it in the horizontal direction or in the vertical direction must cancel each other. So, we now have a way of forming our equations and we can write T sin theta is equal to 50 Newton that was the force which was keeping the bag like this. So, T sin theta in this direction must be equal to the 50 Newton by which I am pulling it this way. So, you first equation is T sin theta is equal to 50 Newtons and the second one would be T cos theta which is equal to the weight of this packet which would be equal to 60 Newton again. If you divide the two equations, you will get tan theta equal to 5 upon 6. Now, you need to find the value for theta. So, you look up the tables and you will find tan inverse of 5 by 6 and this value comes out to be 39.8 degrees. So, you will find that if I put a 50 Newton force here, the angle that this string or rope will make with the vertical will be 39.8 degrees from the values that are given to us. So, where will this kind of problem be used in real life? You have seen people making tents, putting up buntings, putting up hanging certain weights from different places in the ceiling and they need to support it whether it is pictures and things like that. So, you will then be able to use this idea of finding the net forces on that particular system so that you use the correct kind of string, the correct kind of rope in order to support the weight. The next problem, this is an interesting problem because you can find the acceleration of a train. That means like in Delhi you have the metro and as the metro leaves the station, it has a certain acceleration and by doing a simple experiment there, you can find out the value for the acceleration. Just to make you imagine it a little better, a train is moving along a horizontal track. A pendulum is suspended from the roof of the compartment and it makes an angle of 4 degrees with the vertical. Obtain the acceleration of the train. To understand this question, you have got a pendulum suspended from the roof. In a metro, you have bars which you have little handles and you hold, you can suspend a pendulum on that. Now, according to this question, if the train is on a horizontal track, this particular pendulum is making an angle of 4 degrees with the vertical. So, here is our vertical and this is making an angle of 4 degrees. I have enhanced the angle so that it is easier to see this angle is 4 degrees and let us say the acceleration due to gravity that we take is equal to 10 meters per second square and we have to find out the acceleration with which the train is moving. Before we make the free body diagram, how many forces are acting on our pendulum? One is the weight, you can do nothing about it, it is there and the other force must be responsible to take this pendulum along with the train in the direction in which the train is moving. That is the force which will give us the acceleration. So, let us put it, the tension in the string here and the train is moving in this direction and the weight of the pendulum. So, we have over here as you can see the component of this tension in this direction which will show why this object is moving along with the train and something to cancel this particular force so that we can be sure that the pendulum is not moving in the vertical direction. So, the tension in the vertical direction has a component T cos 4 degrees. This should be equal to the weight of the pendulum here and the component of this tension in the string in the direction in which the train is moving that is here, this would be T sin 4 degrees. So, let us make our equations. We have T cos 4 degrees to be equal to mg and let the train have an acceleration of A. So, our second equation would be T sin 4 degrees to be equal to ma. Tan 4 degrees from here would be A upon g 
and therefore, the acceleration would work out to be g tan 4 degrees, which is 10 for g being 10 meters per second square and tan 4 from the tables is 0 0.07 and it gives us the acceleration as 0 0.7 meters per second square. Do you know how high that is? Because you are saying every second the speed is changing by 0 0.7 meters per second. So, huge acceleration with which the metro takes off from the station. You can calculate this yourself also. Problem number 4, we are going to use our idea of free body diagram and all that we have learnt about laws of motion and find out what happens if we have a system which is a connected system. What are these connected systems? Let us first recognize that. A train has compartments. So, each compartment is connected, that is a connected system. You have pulleys and these pulleys are being used in order to take a weight up or down at a construction site. So, there are a large number of connected systems, the trawler on the road, the way your milk comes or the way your petrol comes to the petrol station, you have a cart and then along with that there is a trolley and that trolley is filled up with this. You might have even seen this kind of connected system in the case of a tractor. So, let us see how we can use simple ideas to find out the acceleration, the tensions that are involved and how strong your ropes for connection should be. Our first case is very, very simple. The system shown here has two masses. A mass which I am holding is 12 kilograms and the mass suspended here is 10 kilograms and it is connected by a single thread which is passing over a frictionless pulley. This can move up or down like this. You can, you can guess if I let go of this, this entire system will come down because this is heavier. So, let us see if we can use our concept and idea of free body diagram to see how many forces are acting here and what forces are acting at this point and make equations to find the tension in this string. This string here will have the same tension throughout because it is massless, we are assuming that it is not extendable and we are saying it has no knots in between. So, we are assuming that the tension here is exactly the same as tension at this point. Now, let us find out the free body diagram requires what forces are acting on this and what forces are acting on this block. Let us consider the heavier one first and you can see this will be the weight of this one and the tension would be in the other direction. Similarly, if you were to see what happened to this block, it moved up. That means, if I were to put this free body diagram here for it also because the weight will always be down and the tension is upwards against it, then it is the tension which is bigger for this one because it moved upwards. What happened in this one's case was that the weight must have been more than the tension and that is why it came down. So, you have to judiciously see what is happening at each of these points. This weight came down because its weight was more than the tension and in this particular case, the weight was less than the tension, so it moved up. See like this? This is how it went. That means, the tension was more, it pulled it more and therefore, this is what you got. So, you can make equations. So, for the heavier weight, the weight is more than the tension because it moves down. On the other hand, the free body diagram for the other weight which is moving up, the tension must be more than the weight because it is going up. So, the net force on it is along the tension. So, in every case, you have to judiciously see in which direction the object is finally moving. So, let us make our equations. Let us assume that the tension is T and the acceleration with which both of them because they are connected 
system. So, both the objects whether heavy or light is going to move with the same acceleration. So, our first equation will be 12 g minus t is equal to 12 a because the weight was more and for the second case t minus 10 g is equal to 10 a. You have two equations here and you have two unknowns and you can put the value for g as 10 meters per second square and that will easily help you calculate in steps as you can see that the value for acceleration comes out to be 0 0.90 meters per second square. Using this value in any one of the equations, you can determine the value for tension. So, you have learnt an easy way of finding tension and acceleration for connected systems. Now, we have got another problem. We are to find the acceleration of the block of 100 grams placed on an inclined plane making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal as it slides down. And we have two conditions when it is sliding down a frictionless surface and the second one when it has friction between the surface on which it slides and the base. So, let us consider what are the forces that are acting. First, we are taking a situation without any friction. So, here is a block and as you can see, I have got some arrows which are marked, placed on it in order to show two very important forces. This is the normal force between the surface and the block and this is the weight which will obviously act only vertically downwards. You can see that. So, if I make a free body diagram for this one, then what will it look like? Over here, there is there has to be a component of this force of this force in this direction so that you can explain why this block is not moving in the vertical direction at all. It will slide along the plane and therefore, we should look for what will be the component responsible for this slide. So, you will have to talk about a force which would be acting along the plane like this one. So, one force which is to cancel the value for our force here in the downward direction. And what will be the value of force along this direction? So, m g sin theta is the force which will work on along the direction of the plane and theta would be this angle 30 degrees which is given to us and m g cos theta would be the force which will be responsible to cancel the influence of this normal force. So, let us write our equations and calculate. You have m g sin theta to be equal to m a. So, the acceleration would be g sin theta. What will happen in the condition that there is a frictional force? What will be the direction of frictional force here? The direction of friction force would be opposite to the direction in which the body is likely to move like this. So, how much will be this value? You can obtain that value in terms of the normal force and the coefficient of friction which would be given by mu n. So, n is your m g and mu should be known and you get that value. So, your new equation will look like m g sin theta minus f is equal to m a where this f is equal to mu n. So, now you have an equation to say m g sin theta minus mu m g is equal to m a. So, you have the value for a as g sin theta minus mu g. So, you have learnt a method of using your knowledge about equations of motion, laws of motion and using the technique of free body diagram to solve certain problems. In daily life, you have a lot of things where you have to think about and these are important which sometimes we do not sit and calculate 
what we make a notional thinking about it. If you're suspending a picture from a particular spot, you will make sure that you don't take very weak thread to hang a picture which is heavy. So your, your mind tells you or your experience tells you that it should be strong. But you can calculate the exact choice by using your knowledge of physics.